everybody's looking for sustainable solutions. I don't think anybody has a doubt about that. If you ask anyone, would you like to have sustainability in your work? You know, if you can maintain the resources available to you throughout your work, anybody would say yes. I think that's obvious, nobody doubts that. Hi, my name is Gennaro Macedo. I'm fruit and veg producer here in Sitio de Jazz, Brasil, Brazil. Today, I wanted to share with you a little bit about my journey. It started with this question. How much of what you consume do you produce? You know, I come from the restaurant business and it really was a rat race my life then. And you know, I feel like I won in the rat race. But after all of our achievements, after all the success, I wasn't fulfilled. I understood that this is not what I wanted for my life. So this is when I realized I needed to shift my mindset and I began my search for true sustainability. This is when I discovered agroforestry. Eight years ago, I lived in the city. I had no idea of agriculture whatsoever, but something came to my mind about the way we live in the world today and the way we interact with the planet we live in. And I started realizing that I wanted to understand this better, you know, we're, we're, we're a species of animal living on earth and I really decided I want to understand this better and so I moved to the land I went back to the land and started working with agriculture and with sustainable ways of agriculture of sustainable living different ways of building of producing of everything basically and I started to understand that nature functions in a way and we have for, for some time or at least I had completely disregarded the laws that already exist on the planet and I decided to try to discover that again and to harmonize the way I live with the way nature works and as I was studying as I was trying to find these solutions all this information of how to live in a sustainable way how to produce food in a sustainable way I really searched the internet for content for information for videos on how to do that and I only found a couple of videos there a few blocks here nothing too concrete and concise and systematic and at some point I decided that I wanted to do that I wanted to give that back to people I wanted to give them this opportunity of um, systematizing information so that they could go into their journey also of finding more sustainable ways of living sustainability needs to have the minimum of three pillars environmental social and economical. This is really important because recovering ecosystem is expensive. The good news is we can produce while recovering. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really important to, for us to create a new mindset instead of that mindset that man and nature are completely different and that our activities should be here and nature should be here. That doesn't work. What we want to propose is the idea that we can integrate this because this is really going to be sustainable. And just choosing the origin of inputs for your production is not enough to be really sustainable. Choosing organic or chemicals is not enough. We really have to understand how our production integrates with nature. Because I always question, do we really have to keep this dichotomy, man and nature, aren't we part of it? Is really degrading the land and producing in a way that impoverishes the soil and in a way that we need always external input, more and more external input, the only way of producing, is that really sustainable? even if we're using organic inputs. Nature has found ways 
to accumulate abundance for over four billion years, to enrich in itself. And once we understand this, we're able to integrate and be a part of that. That's definitely true. And this brings us to a, an interesting concept. We talked about sustainability, right? But the truth is, we don't want sustainability. We want more than that. Because nature is not sustainable. Nature enriches itself over time. And we can reproduce that in our systems because if we work along the lines of nature, we're not simply going to maintain the resources available, which is a concept of sustainability. We're going to increase the amount of resources available. And that we can do because we are living in a planet that does that by itself. We have to integrate that system. And the strategy by which this works is optimizing resources and energy available. That's it. We've got infinite sunlight coming to the earth all the time. And we've got plants which synthesize this energy and transform it into food. So basically we have the potential for infinite food production through photosynthesis. And that's a major key for systems of production. Optimizing photosynthesis. And that's where trees come in. And that's why we believe that trees play an essential role in any production system. Nature has found ways to enrich it itself for over 4 billion years, accumulating abundance. Once we understand this, we're able to join this engine and really benefit from that. We're really not looking for a sustainable self. We're really looking for enriching self where we build and we grow with this. Because that's how nature works, right? It's enriching itself. It's not only a matter of maintaining and we really have to build up on that. And the strategy for that to work is very simple. It's what nature uses. Optimizing resources and energy. That's a simple way to say it, right? But it's a complex concept. And the most abundant resource we have is sunlight which is what allows photosynthesis and photosynthesis which is allows food to be produced. We depend on photosynthesis. So if we can maximize or optimize the amount of photosynthesis done, we can optimize food production while recovering ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And that's the secret of forests. And that's why trees play a major role in all the systems on the earth and we want to use them right yeah, and this is where you come to the best part you know if you're looking for valuable nutrition in your fruit in your food this is where you got to get it you know planting it with the forest planting it with the rules of nature you, you know you've got all all the hormones all the all the energy pumping from the trees and the roots and everything so this is really when you get more value more information in that soil that complexity of the soil that reflects on the fruit and that reflects on the flavor and that reflects on the nutritious value which, which we so much want for our families and ourselves. Exactly. So by learning to work with food forests, we can produce food, high value food, nutritious food, at the same time that we're producing forests, at the same time that we're enriching our soil at the same time that we're creating environments abundant abundant environments which allow for other beings to fulfill their lives and to live prosperously so yeah so let's cultivate sustainable abundance let's cultivate sustainable abundance so food forests or agroforestry has developed over the millennia on various places of the globe it has been used by various indigenous and traditional people throughout history. You know, this is something a lot of people have never heard, but even the Amazon rainforest is mm -hmm. said to have been planted by indigenous people in Brazil. And there's actually some evidence to, for, for that, because the Brazilian nut tree, which is a very important species in that ecosystem, 
you actually find that tree in clusters of high density of it, which is an idea that maybe that was systematically planted by the indigenous people. And mm -hmm. so it's really an old system, but it has developed to a very um, technified and proper, prosperous systems to nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, Felipe, uh, we have we spent the last 10 years developing this, uh, systemizing it and understanding how we can make it economically viable for the civilization that we live in today. And so we've taken great strides on that. And we understand now that no matter if you're a home gardener, if you're planting in your daughter's school, or if you're a professional farmer, you know, we've got the system adapted for you. Yeah, definitely. Really, creativity is our limit here because you can adapt agroforestry to any system of production. You can produce grains, you mm -hmm. can produce vegetables, you can produce animals, you can produce fruits, you can produce wood. You can really design it to fit anything. Creativity is our limit here. It's just an amazing system, right? Yeah. So with the complexity of all of this, really it's all about understanding the principles so that you can apply it no matter what it is that you, you, know, that you choose to be your main focus of production. So if you follow us to the next video, we're going to be happy to share with you some of the principles and help clarify a little bit about uh, all this complexity and you understand how it, it, agroforestry is going to uh, benefit you. So from the Agroforestry Academy crew, we hope to see you next time. Sign out. All right.